What's up, Internet? You're tuned in episode 3 of Nintendo Noise, Flip Screen Games' weekly Nintendo podcast. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined, as always, by my very good friends, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello. The mayor of Haken, Mr. Chewy Huerta. Hey, how's it going? And joining us for the first time ever on this podcast, for real reals, Mr. AJ McRae of Fanatics 4. Yes, hello. I am also here. What's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah, you know, we had a, a big a big week in Pokemon news. I knew we were going to have to to dive into some of this stuff and get into the nitty gritty. So we thought, what better way to celebrate than to bring on AJ so that we could monopolize the entire episode arguing with each other. Just talking about Pokemon. Dude. Just talking. But you know what? I got to say, I feel like we're on the same page with most of the shit we're going to talk about today. So <laughs> I'm excited to jump into it. Uh, we've got a lot of Pokemon talk to talk through this week. A lot of questions from you listeners. Uh, but before that, let me just take a minute to tell you that this episode of Nintendo Noise is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of August. Christopher Val- Christopher Valenz, excuse me, aka that doc guy, Zaid Ida, and Wakahula. Thank you all so much for your support over on patreon.com slash flipscreen games. Uh, remember, if you aren't already, you can head over there and for just two bucks, you can get access to our Patreon exclusive show, One More Thing, where Steve and I talk about uh, our lives outside the world of video games. This week, we talked about my crazy weekend uh, driving to DC and back, going to a wedding, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, and guess what? I got sick. So if you want to hear uh, about my crazy escapades and uh, me and Steve answer some dumbass questions that we got as well, uh, it was a great episode. Yeah, I, you can go check that out. I remember at the end of the episode, we called the Queen Amish. We did. And I was, it was just <laughs> bizarre. It just really went places. If you want to find out why the Queen is Amish, two bucks, patreon.com slash flip screen games. Uh, and then, of course, near me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, near she's right in the neighborhood. <laughs> And then, of course, if you want to get our other free show, uh, the Flip Screen Games podcast, this week we had our main topic all about what defines DLC in 2021. Uh, we got some hot takes from you listeners, uh, so go check that conversation out. It was a great episode. For all the rest of our links, you can head over to flipscreen.games. We've got links to our Discord, our Twitch, where every Thursday Steve and I and sometimes Chewy are getting together and streaming games. It's a good time. Um, yeah, come check it out. Go check out the archive of the last couple weeks of stuff we've been doing. It's been fun. We are very, very close on the road back to affiliate. So, uh, if you haven't checked out one of our weekly Twitch streams, go tune in on Thursday night. It's a good time. Uh, and then of course you can follow us at flip screen games, wherever you get your social media. We're up on Twitter, keeping up with all the stuff we're doing. Uh, we ask for questions for the show there as well. So go right in over there or hit us up at questions at flip Uh, if you want to get your thoughts read in our question block, just like I said, uh, just so many of you, did. it's like the whole episode this week. It's going to be great. All right. So that's enough shilling. Let's jump right into this main topic, right? We got a Pokemon Presents this week. We got updates on uh, the Diamond and Pearl remakes. We got a, a pretty meaty second look at uh, at Arceus Legends. Um, I, I Overall, I thought uh, what they had to show us was pretty damn strong. And I walked you away feeling over Pokemon Cafe mix like that. Yeah, and yeah. I, know, yeah. I was gonna say if we want to really talk about the other stuff, there's Unite <laughs> no, news that I actually care about. But you know, I was, uh, we got a, we got a lot of questions, so I'm gonna skirt the minor <laughs> stuff for now. And I wanted to just before we get into the questions and everything, um, initial impressions for what we saw. AJ, as a, a a major Pokemon head and our guest, why don't you start? What did you think of the presents, and how are you feeling about these two games now that we have a little Pokemon bit more information? Unite. Pokemon Unite School. Game of the Blissey, Year. Why? Why Blissey? Why not Blastoise first? That makes no sense. Um, they announced course, two more Pokemon, Pokemon before Blastoise. Course, yeah, th- true. True. Truth. Um, I wonder, Sylveon, though, did... I'm curious if you're Eevee first or if you just straight up go to Sylveon. Um, that's that's going to be interesting, yeah. Yeah, because cause does that bar them from using other evolutions or is it confirmation that they might and you might be able to choose be like i'm picking eevee but i want to evolve in umbreon or, or whatever oh uh, that would Leafeon. be interesting yeah leafion that's the answer yeah leafion's <laughs> the correct one i guess um the as long as you didn't say uh flareon you know i would i would have i would have had some words but any other one <laughs> flareon's trash um but anyway pokemon yeah, legend to arceus and pokemon bringing diamond and shining pearl look sick um more down for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl than I previously was. I'm not, I'm in the same place with Arceus. I was already sold. I already won it. It's fine. Everything's cool with that. 
so they don't even have to show me this game anymore. <laughs> I'm in already. Stop selling. <laughs> so you said that you're more into uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl now. What about what we saw this time around um, kind of gave you that vibe? Uh, they just kind of confirmed that it is like a regular remake. Like, before, it was, like, giving vibes that it was, like, a remake, but, uh, like, less, um, like, fully-fledged remake. Um, and now, it seems like the only thing that's different is that it's not, like, developed in the same engine as the, the last games. Like, it's not a Sword and Shield uh, or, or Generation 8 uh, remake. It's a remake that looks more in line with, like, the more chibi, like... 16-bit pokemon games or whatever yeah. um it still has all the like flourishes where they're like we're going to do this feature again but it's better it's the super pokemon contest you know like that that sort of stuff um there's partner pokemon which is another like bingo card feature for a pokemon <laughs> remake like they're doing all the stuff that they usually would do in a remake it just looks like Link's awakening yeah, I, I I don't know. It's so funny to me that people are so down on the style. Like, I, I'm not in love with it, but I don't yeah. think it looks bad at all. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm indifferent. I feel like a lot of people are down on the chibi art style, but it was a chibi art style for at least 15 years, <laughs> and nobody cared. Um, but now, all of a sudden, it's like, I hate chibi. It's like, what? Yeah. And, <laughs> guess, you know... I think it's funny you I got that vibe from the very beginning of it like oh this is going to be kind of more like that classic top down Pokemon style that we got through those games so for me I was just like oh I, I kind of get what they're going for here art style I thought it was you know just whatever too I'm indifferent it's Pokemon I don't think I play Pokemon for the art style <laughs> to be honest with you <laughs> yeah um, totally I I, I'm still on the camp of like, man, I would really love a really stylized Pokemon game that like follows maybe the anime or something. So for me, I've always been just kind of indifferent with what they go to with their models. But yeah, I I wasn't completely surprised that it's just that. It's basically going to be the remake, kind of like the old style remakes that we've gotten, kind of like, you know, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, more of that, more along those lines. So I don't know. I, I have been excited for this one just because I played Gen 4 once way back when it came out. So for me, I'm just like, man, I don't remember any of this. This is going to be an experience for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely have some of those feelings too because like Gen 4 is. I would say probably one of my favorites. Like it's in the conversation for me, and like the, it's it's in my top three for sure. Right, the order might change on any given day, um, but Gen Four like was when I really got into the competitive scene. Like we had the physical special split that generation. That was obviously like a huge game changer in terms of just how the battle system worked and you know what it meant for the meta game. Um, obviously, people look back really fondly on um, on the gold and silver remakes that we got that generation. So, like, I don't know. I I love Gen Four, but I also haven't gone back and played it in so long that, similar to you, Chewy, I think a lot of the like the beats of the story and like some of the town layouts and some of those things, like, I'm not as they're not as fresh in my memory as games that are older than it that I've played dozens of times or games that are old, newer than it that I've played more recently, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm super excited to, to go back and kind of relive these games. And, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the art style just feels like a 3D version of the DS sprite art. And mm -hmm. that's not as good. You know, I, I prefer sprite art. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I think that's probably part of the problem, though, is that the series has moved on and has moved away from that. And I guess this feels like it's going backwards, but they've just remained faithful to what it was before. And I can imagine that's why some people have issue, but I also think some people just take issue with anything. I, literally, yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I hated the art style the first time I saw the game. The first time I saw the game, I thought uh, it just didn't look very good. This time around when they showed a lot more, aside from the very strange trailer, where there's zoom in on text like weird specific, angled like, zooms where oh. it's like what was going on with that trailer it was so bizarre what a but design choice 
it was a really strange choice. I was just, uh, it, and it was like such intense music. It's like, look how cool this like pixely text was. We zoom in and it just gets blurrier and blurrier. <laughs> <laughs> it was just bizarre. So uh, but some of the changes they made, I'm curious as to what you think, because they seemed really cool. The fact that if when you're underground in the base and you add different statues that will spawn different Pokemon down there, and some of those Pokemon, they're the only way you can get them is by having the statue in your base and then going out and finding them down there. What did you lot think of that as, as kind of uh, people familiar with this game? Because I've, I've not played Gen 4 at all. Uh, so this was something uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier before we started. Like, I make videos a lot about, like, what if this franchise made a game now and did this? This is something I've been talking about forever. Where I'm sorry, like AJ. Uh, where do those where do those videos come out? Uh, YouTube.com slash Fanatics 4. Every, Every week? Tuesday, what days? Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um but yeah i i like was like okay we got this wild area thing uh something that pokemon does a lot is like they're like oh okay the genie's out of the bottle we're just doing this now this is our feature that is like always going to happen um and i feel like the wild area has potential to be a feature like that and the underground was a perfect feature to adapt for something like the wild area and i feel like this change is their attempt at that um, where before the underground was just like this thing where you do the like the um, the excavating mini game with your friends and you, you tap on a touch screen. It's like, oh, there's like a gem here or a heart scale or whatever. But now you can catch Pokemon here in that little like wild area area where it's the only place where from what we've seen, there's overworld Pokemon yeah. and that whole situation. Um, so I think it was a good move. It, it, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I dig it, and I think it and um, the thing that Chewie called out earlier, like the the updates of the contest system, are both the exact kind of thing that I have always, I won't say always, that I've been frustrated by with recent remakes. Um, I I think Oros are arguably the worst Pokemon games ever made. Um it, of Damn. the mainline franchise. Let, let, let me clarify Damn. that. Um, <laughs> Rude. And I, 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 because I think when you really, like, boil those games down into in terms of, like, what they add or subtract, I feel like it takes away a lot more than it brings to the table. Whereas this feels like, okay, we're trying to take the Underground, which is one of the defining features of Gen 4, and recreate all the stuff that worked about it that you remember liking those mini games that AJ was calling out and the ability to get rare items. Cool. Um, but you know, we've been there, we've done that and it was cool at the time. You, you wouldn't have liked a, a memorial of the underground like they did with the battle frontier. <laughs> Here lies the underground. It would have been cool if you wanted to play in this, but it's dead now. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I like the idea of them trying to elevate it a little bit, you know, like let's bring it back, but let's add new features. Let's build on what we've learned from games that have come since gen four. Right. And, and kind of giving us that, that taste of the wild area and also the ability for you to get Pokemon that weren't in the original set of games. Um, that's a smart choice in my opinion. That's going to be a thing that I think will make a lot more people engage with the underground in a more serious way. Mm -hmm. and the other thing, the other like two changes I kind of noticed were the the partner Pokemon. Obviously, they're back. That was something I was actually really excited about because I used to love walking around with um, my Pokemon. And Let's go, um, and I'll probably. Uh, to be honest, that probably sells me on this game more than any, anything else. It's ridiculous. I don't know why. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> Partner Pokemon as a concept are the funniest thing to me. I think it was Imran Khan from Fanbyte who I saw a tweet about this where he's like, I'm pretty sure this is a feature that they remove every other generation just so they can bring it back and have Pokemon fans be like, oh my god, it's back! Like... I love it. I used it's to so love dressing up Pikachu and like getting a little hat and, and stuff like that for him. It was great. Well, in fairness, that's that's probably not going to happen here. Uh, no. That's a Pokemon yeah. Let's Go specific thing. Um, but it's it's such a cool feature that they could always do. Um, but they don't. Uh, what I'm curious about is if this is like hard gold, soul silver level of partner Pokemon where they like kind of mattered in the plot where there's like moments where it's like, oh, your Pokemon found that thing. It, it, it helped the lady out of the Elix Forest, forest or whatever. Um, or if it's just like, a Pokemon, cosmetic thing. Sword and Shield. Your Pokemon gave you a heart emoji. <laughs> like he's happy right now. I'll tell you what. Uh, one thing that I really want them to remove is that bullshit where they're like, "Your Pokemon loves you so much, it did a critical hit and one shot oh. KO." It's like, bro, I'm trying oh, yeah. to catch Pokemon right now. All right, 
You tell me I got to use garbage Pokemon to catch Pokemon because my Pokemon are too OP? How about they Yo, crit hit not, and I'm leave not, him with one health? How about that? I was about to say, yeah, I was about to say, I'm not mad at the, like, he loved you so much he decided not to die from poison. Great. Love that <laughs> like, one. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Keep that. It's when, I'm tr when I find a shiny Pokemon <laughs> and I can't catch it because... Has it happened to you? Yes! That's that straight up happened to me. I, I had a, a shiny Pokemon come up and I was like, oh, Perfect. I'm gonna catch this motherfucker. Every ball I threw, he was too high of a level, was popping right out. I'm like, I gotta hit him. I hit him with my weakest like you Pokemon. Throw, you didn't throw a quick ball at him. I, I didn't like know. Throw a quick ball. You should have threw a quick ball. They're broken. Mm -hmm. They're broken, dude. I didn't have any. Which Pokemon was it? And who killed it? It was um. What's uh? Did you release him? <laughs> 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 I release him. It was that. It's the normal type. Um, the squirrel who has the uh, stockpile. Squibbit? Yeah, yeah, yeah squab it. Oh, it was. Oh, it was or it could have okay. uh, Greedon, who Max insists looks like Parker, and I'm. That's an insult. Greedon's the second one, right? Yes. Yeah, that was the one. It was him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I forget who woke him, but it was one of the Pokemon I beat the game with, <laughs> and I was like, "You son of a bitch." <laughs> you could release definitely him. release Greedon, dude. You could definitely release him. <laughs> Oh, no, he was the shiny is what I'm saying. Oh, he was the shiny. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. I thought he was the one that killed the shiny. I was about to say, you can absolutely release <laughs> I could definitely release my Greedon, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, and then, um, obviously, with Arceus, we saw a ton of new information in the trailer. I want to talk about all of it, but we also have a ton of questions that will kind of guide us through the conversation. So I'm going to kick things off with a question that comes from Affy Lockhart, one of our Patreon supporters, who wrote in and said, Hey, Pete, Steve, and Chewy, and I'm going to add NAJ. So as I write this, we have just seen the Pokemon Presents for Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus. Damn, just the disrespect on uh... <laughs> <laughs> on, on uh, Pokemon. I was I forgot my own bit. Cafe oh mix. I don't know what the fuck was it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which game I don't care about. Am I going to? Do you know what though? <laughs> if, if Pokemon Sleep was there, that would have been the standout hit of the show because everyone would have been excited to finally be able to get a good night's sleep. Yeah, finally. Yes, I've been, I've been waiting. <laughs> To be put to sleep by Pikachu. You know what would really kill me would be if they put out Pokemon Sleep and it was literally just an app that played the Jigglypuff song. Like, that was it. Oh, that would be great. And it's been in development this long. And they're like, we finally nailed it. We finally nailed it down, everybody. No, they had to get, they had to get the cadence right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, like, Pokemon solves everything. It'll solve sleep just like it solved kids going outside. And the brushing the teeth, do you remember? They taught the kids oh, yeah. to brush yeah, yeah, their yeah. teeth as well. Yeah. Not wrong. Yeah. Who needs parents when you've got Pokemon? That's what I say. I mean, oh, that's the God. rules of the universe. You're 10 years old. You go off on your own. You know, it's like. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're good. Pokemon has been throwing their children away since way before iPads. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just caught my t my taught my kid how to ride a bike. Time to send him off on his own. You know, it's like you got it. Do they? I don't even feel like they teach them that. <laughs> They're like, all right, you're 10. Here's a Pokemon. Figure it out. You'll figure it out, kid. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> Affy asks, what are your thoughts on what we've seen in the presents? I personally am not still convinced by Brilliant Diamond, uh, Shining Pearl, but I am all in on Legends based on how much the game has improved, as well as the new features and new Pokemon. Hisuian, is it Hisuian? How, how do you say it? Uh, I saw this in the video. Because <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Hisuian. <laughs> Hisuian, okay, we'll say. There's an A, there's an A missing in, uh, Affy's, It's uh, Hisuian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is yeah yeah that's where the nido kings are that's where they come nido out. king <laughs> I, yeah, I, well you know i i say it's nido king i feel like people do not understand this bit because i'm pretty sure that this that was all it was yeah. off mic it was all off mic yeah. we're just mispronouncing pokemon that's the whole bit don't worry about it so uh anyway and new pokemon hisuian growlithe is the best also, as I know Pete is a Pokemon fan, did you catch the connections between Hisui and modern-day Sinnoh, such as Team Galaxy and Legends, and this clearly leading Team Galactic in modern-day Sinnoh? Hope y'all are doing great. Affy. Which is crazy. That's crazy. Like, what? What's going on? Are they good guys? Are we bad guys? Are we going to find out they're uh, secretly what's, good guys? What's happening? I, I feel like... I feel like the coolest thing would be if it was like a Iga Clan, uh, what was the other, the freaking Chica. I forgot the main one. Um, but if it was like that sort of thing where it's like they used to be one and then they splintered. Like I was like, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. And actually I'm the right one. And now Team Galactic was like the one that went haywire off the, off the, off the, the rails. That's kind of what way. I think is going to be the case. 
Mm. Like, I, I feel like it's going to be that there was like this awful splintering and like all the people mm. that we know from this part of the timeline that are good guys or whatever all break off or get murdered or something, you know? <laughs> I don't know. What, yeah, one of them looks sus. I forgot what, what I think it was. Uh, I got I to gotta go back to the trailer and look what her name is. Cause she looks like she's a bad guy. <laughs> like she gives me um, the the girl from uh, Sun and Moon, the like the leader of the her mother. Actual... Yes, this I, yeah, I can't remember the immediately. Thing. I was like, she's evil. One thousand percent. There's no way she's not. That's the type of vibes I'm getting from this Team Galaxy member. <laughs> I feel like at least yeah, I, one of them's a bad person for yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, in general, I'm, I'm definitely in on both of these games. Like, you know, I think reservations aside, I was always going to be here for a gen four remake and I definitely walked away from the first trailer for, for legends. Um, I don't want to say concerned, but like cautiously optimistic, right? Like we, any Pokemon fan can tell you we've all gotten on the hype train too soon at one point or another, been very excited about a game and then walked away maybe feeling burned in some regard or another right like it happens to the best of us and with this game like I wanted to hope and pray that it was going to be the game that they you know seemed to be teasing but I was kind of trying to reserve judgment until we saw more of it and then looking at this this showcase where it's like yeah okay you know how we were like oh it's kind of like breath of the wild then they're like okay no it's actually definitely yeah. breath of the wild there's you like can the, fly the swing rank camera as well it was like yeah. straight out of the beginning of breath of the wild i i was 100 percent in on this game once i saw this trailer um when I'm you go really and jump for it. and just fly i was like oh, all right they yeah did it. that was I'm awesome in, yeah. i'm in baby <laughs> the we flying and like the swimming on them it was so good. For sharing the screen. If I share my screen, are we set It's going to screw everything. It's going to screw okay, everything. Okay, no, Don't I won't do it. <laughs> the Silene or whatever her name is, Captain Silene, <laughs> she's evil. Uh, I'm going to, you, I'll, I'll, you know what, I'll do, AJ's, I'll find, I have the trailer up on my screen. I'll find her and see if I can uh, show her face. Oh, the no, moment I the saw trailer. that, the moment I saw oh, that growl is though, and then they I announced did, the fact put it that... In the chat. <laughs> Perfect. The fact that Pokemon Home support is coming to this. Does that mean I can get that Growlithe in other games? Or do they need to add patch support? Uh, you know, they, um, yeah, they, it would have to specifically be in the game. Like, Okay. Yeah, so I, we actually got a question a uh, on that. So I'll, I'll pull this question from the uh, question block real quick. This one comes from uh, Tyler Olson, another one of our Patreon supporters, who wrote in and said, With Pokemon Home support confirmed for Pokemon Legends Arceus, does that mean we'll be able to transfer the new Growlithe and save it from extinction? Does this confirm Pokemon Home as time travel? How pissed will Dialga be? <laughs> Yo, I wasn't even considering the fact that Hisuian Growlithe is dead. <laughs> like, I you wasn't even what, thinking though? about that. <laughs> Picture this, picture this. We've always gotten like fossil Pokemon. Introduce yeah. it as a fossil in the I, next oh. game. I feel like that would totally make sense. Yeah. Like I I definitely think you'll be able to transfer these Pokemon out into other games. Like that's not yeah. really a thing that's ever happened, right? Like even Mel Metal. It won't be like retroactive, but they're going to be supported in other games. Yeah, sure. exactly. Exactly. And and I, I think that they'll have some bullshit in universe uh thing like Chewie just laid out where it's like oh yeah uh, I excavated the Hisui region we found some fossils here you go they're back has the same name and stats as the one you had in uh, Legends RC is totally crazy <laughs> well, I wonder if they'll change up the stats though too because haven't they changed them up with the other um, alternate versions of Pokemon yeah definitely I'm sure it'll have different stats than base Growlithe I meant more like uh this be... specific one in the game has like 100 yeah. health and your new one, oh, the, okay, one the okay, fossils yeah. also got 100 health yeah. it's like oh yes this I just happens to be a fossil that. for uh your hisuian growlith named buddy yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> yo it's your ancestors dead pokemon we revived it oh you know what okay all right you know what? you're winning me over you're winning me over with this lore <laughs> explanation i like this i like this a lot uh, I put it in the Twitter DMs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sent the. Okay, yeah, okay, the, okay. The, the the clearly evil. Here now I can show I can show them. Yeah, Captain uh, Cillian. Here, let me open this in another. Oh my gosh, it's just the wrong side for the watch along screen. You're killing <laughs> me. This is ridiculous. All right, hold on, hold on. 
It's this. It's this motherfucker. Everybody on YouTube. Hilarly evil. <laughs> they look pretty Absolutely. sketchy. You know. I don't know. She says she's your potential and allows you to take tri- the trial to or, join the galaxy team. Or she's got what's her face vibes um, from the Legend of Korra. Oh, 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 I think I know what you're talking about. Wait, wait. She, wait she, do you mean the villain from the last scowl. season? Or no, do you... no, I mean Bayfong. Okay, mm, yeah, mm, Toph's mm. daughter. I was gonna say, yeah, it could be a Bayfong situation where she just seems mean, but she's actually nice, and it's the other guy that we're like, that it guy's probably be. fine, and he's the bad one. It could be, but I feel like Pokemon is usually the franchise that names their bad guy, bad guy make bad guy evil. <laughs> and they're like, yo, I don't know, he might be bad, he might be good. Like, um, what's his name, Lysander or whatever. He's another one that was very clearly evil. Yeah, it's like. Like, no, nah, this guy's not like, a good yo, dude. This is my friend. It's like, this is my friend, dude. I'm like, yo. But it does also say that you're allowed to take a trial to join the Galaxy team. I wonder if at some point you get, like, booted off or what you decide to leave because you oh, realize that. Oh, yeah, maybe you guys. caused you the schism. That they're a cult. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, I'm out of here. I, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm going to do the Pokedex yo, on my own. That's the inciting incident. It's like you left the cult and you're not allowed to leave the cult. <laughs> like, <laughs> Gonna beat you out of the best friend's gang. Yeah. Uh so <laughs> I'm gonna I'll pull I'm gonna pull in another question here as a jumping off point for more uh more questions about this. So this one goes from Olaf uh from the Discord. This actually so if you'll recall at the end of the last episode, there was a question that I said I was gonna hold over. I felt like it would be evergreen. In fact, it actually became very topical this week, so I'm really glad that we held it. Uh, so Olaf wrote in with an initial question I'm going to ask and then provided follow up after the presents came out. So uh, Olaf wrote in and said, do you think Pokemon Legends will be delayed to perf- improve performances for the game? Uh, it's been forever since the last trailer and time seems to be running out of it. Also, do you think this will be the Pokemon game to play for newcomers and veterans alike? One which will change the Pokemon franchise forever or will it be another uh, quote unquote one time hit like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? So let's start there and then I'll add in the follow up question after that. So do you think the game could see a delay and no. do you think this will be the game that appeals to all Pokemon fans? I don't think we know enough to say definitively. Like, I feel like people are too quick to be like, this game clearly isn't done. As if they drop the trailer on the build that they're working on the day they edited the trailer. Right, yeah. You know? I'm like, sorry, I'm sorry, AJ. That the, 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 the fact is in the trees. And, you know, <laughs> you've got to just compare them to Skyrim's trees from 10 years ago. And they're just clearly not up to scratch. It's so identical. They just need to scrap the whole game and that's, start that's again. That's the thing that's crazy to me. Like, nobody thinks about the whole, like, equi- you know, like, there's, there's, like, always that that like creator meme of like either it's cheap and easy or fast and cheap or you know like that yeah. whole situation um they're not thinking about that that whole equation because like yeah skyrim has great trees but you might fall through them like <laughs> like <laughs> i i really don't care about what the game looks like i want the game to work mechanically in the way that pokemon games work i want the pokemon to be cute you know like <laughs> i want to be able to get my gym badge or whatever not in this game because it's probably not going to be the case but like I don't care about what the trees look like. Um, what they need to spend their time on is making sure that it plays like a good Pokemon game. Yeah. Um, and I, Chewie said it earlier, right? Like, I don't play Pokemon for the graphics. I'm not sitting here and saying that visuals don't matter, that they can't make a yeah. game better, that that Pokemon shouldn't care about those things. But at the end of the day, mechanics are more important than visuals every single time. Yeah. I think that what I'm saying is not so much that they don't matter, but I do feel like they don't matter to them. And I'm not mad at them for that because like every studio has priorities. Every mm-hmm. studio prioritizes specific things. Every studio has their own deadlines. You know, Pokemon specifically is in the unique situation of it being like, um, like this symbolic integral like cog to a media conglomerate that is much bigger than the video games so for them to be like ah but the gamers you know like the gamers really want a pokemon game that looks like grand theft auto 7 you know we got we got to give it to them they're like ah but plushies make way more money you know like the games are 20 percent of our revenue and we're really going to spend all our time on the video game i don't know about that (laughs) so it's like 
prioritizing what is the most important about this franchise specifically? I'd say the one thing that like Game Freak or, you know, Pokemon Company really struggles with these games though is really just like ever since they left the top down chibi art style, it's like the games don't perform very great in general. Um it, in the sense of like, you know, they're lagging all over the place. It's like just on a like, technical it, level, yeah. Yeah, on a technical mm -hmm. level, it just doesn't hold up to other things as well. And right. that that was my main worry, I'd mm -hmm. say, with Legends, yeah. where I'm just like, I don't know, man. Things are, tend to be kind of a glitchy mess in these new games, <laughs> and I wonder if they're going to get it. But from what we've seen so far, it looks, you know, it looks like it's going to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we'll just yeah. I'd agree well with that. I'd agree with that. There. But I'd also I'd also say like Game Freak uh being a magazine company <laughs> has <laughs> never been great at making video games. Ever. Like even the like pixel style Pokemon games, they've been glitchy messes too. Um in the same way. But they're Pokemon, so it's like people don't care. Yeah, I do think though that like <clears throat> to Chewie's point, right? Like you have kind of like from Gen two to Gen five where I feel like there's not to say that the games are without glitches or whatever, but like not the base level just like frame dips. Yeah, frame stuff. dip. Yeah. Like I remember even in the first trailer, there was like a shot of a Pokemon in the overworld that's moving like five frames per second. You know, it's like right. it's not to say that those kinds of criticisms are totally unfounded. Um, yeah. But I think you look at this trailer and it looks a lot better already. You right. know, um, and, and I want to be clear. I'm not saying that they're unfounded. I just think that. They don't care about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm more playing devil's advocate to the the listener. Yeah, because I, I yeah. yeah, I get where you're coming from on that. Um, and I guess kind of to speak to Olaf's question yeah. too. I, I don't think they're gonna delay it. I think like yeah, okay. they put a date out there. It's very. Has that happened? Like, how often has Pokemon like pushed stuff back after putting a date out there? And Nintendo in general, like. Uh, well, the Nintendo does it. Not well, I mean, once they get like in. pretty yeah, specific but... with the day, like it seems pretty set in stone, yeah. yeah. It, it has happened, on the franchise like Yoshi yeah. gets delayed a lot for whatever reason, and Zelda usually gets delayed for well, that makes more sense. I don't know why Yoshi yeah, yeah. gets delayed, <laughs> but, but no, Zelda, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> um, having, Pokemon, spoken, yeah, no, having spoken to Pixel about this in the past, though, um, he had he kind of gave us a little bit of inside info on how they're localization process works and it's basically it's locked six months before release date and then it's entirely just localization and like minor patches but the whole base yeah. gameplay the you can right. play it start to finish is done um mm -hmm. so at this point they will just be localizing and so i can imagine that they are pretty confident that they know in january that this game will be ready to release worldwide so i if you had to ask me to place a bet, I would say the game will probably not get delayed. That said, yeah. I think that there are a few things um, worth considering in that conversation just to say, like, again, to play devil's advocate, it could happen, right? Like, so uh, to answer Chewie's earlier question, Pokemon has had delays before. I believe it was Gen 3 that got delayed from a fall, initially a fall release, and then came out in, like, spring of the following year. Um, it has happened before, um, and obviously, like, you know, in terms of Nintendo games, right, I mean, most notably, I would say in recent memory, Animal Crossing was delayed for a year, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah. it it does happen, a few and far between, for sure, but it could happen, and I think the, the thing that, that makes me wonder if maybe this makes sense is that, you know, um, the point that AJ made earlier about Pokemon and just the way that Pokemon is developed and the way that it, you know, its it cycle requires new games to come out to facilitate, you know, the rest of the marketing machine. Um, you have also kind of seen them start decentralizing that over the last couple mm -hmm. years, right? Like the current Pokemon anime is more of an anthology. It's about going back to regions that we've already seen before. You can imagine that, Ar you know, Arceus Legends is probably not going to be the thing that drives the anime um, because it's set in the past. So, like... You can see how it feels like they're starting to decentralize plush and card game and, and all of the other things from having to be connected to the games, you know? Um, right. So that's one thing. And then there's also the, you know, I don't necessarily argument to be made, but fact, right? That, like, we do have 
these re-releases coming out, like, months before Arceus is supposed to come out. So, like, in theory, I don't think it's totally insane to think that they're not telling us that the release date has moved because for their quarterly earnings, it looks good to have a brand new Pokemon game coming out at the beginning of, or at the end of the Q, uh, of Q4, right before the end of their financial year. Whereas the closer you get to it, maybe you make that call later on, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. And I'll say specifically what I mean is like once we get an exact day, like what is it, what is it January something? It's nineteenth uh, like or whatever. Day. Yeah, like it has a hard date. Like the end of the month. Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. once we haven't, once we've seen that like hard date on there. I don't think we've seen too many delays from that. Instead, yeah, like instead of it being like spring 2021, right? It's... Yeah, then I completely yeah. expect them at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, yeah, sure. Like mm -hmm. Zelda next year, they're like, ex we're aiming for 2022, and I'm just yeah, like, that's 2023. You better aim yeah, exactly. really well yeah. because I want that game. <laughs> it's like, so that's a that's a Switch <laughs> 2 launch time, title then, huh? At the same time, I kind of I kind of hope that they do. Well, then again, though, um, if they do if they do March 2022, that'd be sick. Because it's the five year anniversary. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no to that. But I will say, I hope this game gets delayed. Not because I think it looks bad. Not because I think it necessarily needs more time. Um, but more I think time's if, always good. Exactly, and especially with a game like yeah. this. And we'll get into uh, it a little bit later in some of the other questions. So, um, but like a world like this benefits from depth. Mm -hmm. And the more time you have, which to, it, to be honest, it looks like it has quite a lot. Like all the seasons and things, I was so surprised at how fleshed out those areas looked. And some of the areas, it looked like you could go to them again, and like it was different environments, but in the same space, like different biodomes that that were happening there, which was cool to see. Um, I also want to touch on Olaf's second point from the from the question. I don't think this will be Legends will be the game for um, newcomers and veterans, just because the changes to the battle system just seem so um, so broad, and the fact that they explicitly said at the end of the presentation that all ranked battles will continue to happen in Sword and Shield, and they won't happen in either Legends or um diamond and pearl so i i can see a lot of uh professional pokemon players in fact all professional po pokemon players will just continue to play within sword and shield they're not going to even probably bother with uh legends see that i don't agree with uh, yeah i th i think it depends on a lot like them continuing to do battles in sword and shield specifically isn't them inherently saying like this battle system's not ready for that it's this is dropping at a weird time in the season. We're going to uproot the whole thing for something that may or may not work. I mean, this is also only you a single-player like, game. Yeah. You know, like, the, I, I, we know, yeah. I, I think, and I, I'm pretty sure that's being confirmed if you go on the website, but um, but, but I, I, I see what you're saying, Steve, in terms of, like, if you're somebody whose whole thing is competitive play, like, you're not putting down Sword and Shield. Um, but I don't think that that means you're not interested in this or that you don't want to play this, because I think that... I don't know, like, I'm I'm that player, right? And, like, I'm very excited for this game. It's just a different yeah. kind of Pokemon game. You know what vibes this is giving me? This is giving me, like... Because normally, you know, we're getting Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl remakes in November or so. We've got, what, like, a month and a half, and then Legends comes out. And normally I'd think, like, oh, I would want to let this game breathe a little bit. We don't have to put out this next Pokemon game right away. So it's giving me vibes that it's like really a companion game to the Sinnoh region, you know, because it is taking place there. And it's giving me also like Bowser's uh, Fury vibes where they're like, hey, we're messing with some things with Mario and testing some stuff out. Here's Mario yeah. 3D World. It's going, it's coming out combined with this Bowser's Fury thing so you can get a taste for it. So to me, this is giving me like the... Here's kind of a beta of what Pokemon's what that, we're working on think, to change up Pokemon. Yeah, that's I think what it definitely feels like. It's kind of like this is where we want to take the game, but if fans hate this, we'll just go right. back to what we were doing exactly. before. Um, just um, to confirm, though, this is a two-player game according yeah, to Nintendo. Yeah, I'm website. on the website. It says up to two players. I, um, I don't think we've seen any co-op gameplay or anything like that so i'd be interested to see what that is at some point so also in fairness they've been known to update this 
Like, there's been times where they've revealed a game and it says, like, single player or whatever, and then they add, like, local co-op or whatever sure. on pages like this. Um, so, for all we know, it might not even be just up to two players. Yeah, that's true. And, I mean, I, I don't know. I could see them adding, like, some kind of, like, a raid thing or the ability to trade or whatever, but it's maybe just not, you know, as as centric as, like, you know, multiplayer is to the main games, right? Like, that's... I think, at the very least, it's going to be a Pokemon Coliseum, Gale of Darkness situation where it's, like, okay. uh, mostly a single-player game, but there is a battle component to it where you can play with your friends. Interesting. I could see that, yeah. Uh, so, oh, see, see, I really want like Pokemon Monster Hunter style now, where I just get someone <laughs> along and we're, we're putting a party together and we're going out and we're catching Pokemon in the wild, maybe doing some of those like boss battles that we saw together. I think mm -hmm. all of that stuff would be fun. Like a raid battle sort of situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? I usually think there are too many legendaries in every game. And that's the one situation where I'm like, put in all the legendaries if we're all raiding <laughs> these things. That'd be dope. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think, I think I about this from. game though that like I like maybe just core Pokemon fans, but I think that people are going to be disappointed by this game because <laughs> I don't think it's going to be as big as as like people are thinking. Like it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it's trying to be the Pokemon game. It's it feels like something on the level of a Gale of Darkness or like Coliseum, but in the modern day, I th where it's not necessarily that in the sense that those games had like 90 Pokemon or whatever. Like, I think this will probably have like in the like two to 400 range. I doubt it will be on the higher end of that, um, but it will feel a lot more like a contained, like segmented off thing than it being a Pokemon game TM. Yeah, and I I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily think that that means people will be disappointed with it though. I think it's very much like I don't know. Like I look at this and and re responding to the question right of like, will this be uh, the game for newcomers and veterans that'll change the Pokemon franchise forever? Um, yeah, I think in some ways yes. I think if this game comes out and it's popular, I think it'll be the establishment of a new type of Pokemon game. I think. That like so the reason why I think that there's and when I say people are going to be disappointed I don't mean everybody I mean that there's just going to be a segment of Pokemon fans that are not going to be happy about like, I mean um that's yeah, everything exactly, right exactly exactly <laughs> but but like a lot of people are like betting the bank on like this is what Pokemon is now you know and I think that there's a potential for that like I agree with you in the sense that it could become more and I'd even go as far as to say that I think that this has the potential to become the Pokemon standard like the new mainline but this specifically is not going to be the end point this is them beta testing for sure this yeah i think in this you made this point earlier and it's in the same way that sword and shield was like dipping your toe into the idea of the wild area this mm -hmm. is now the promise of that fully realized and i think yeah. it'll be the same thing for single player uh more story driven more you know um less centralized kind of game yeah, and I would even One. go as far to say that this is the next step in them dipping their toe in. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I feel like they don't dip their toe in and then say, ah, water feels great. I'm diving in. They're like, they dip their toe in and then they wade in the water a little bit. You know, like they put, they put their, their, their knee deep now. <laughs> you know, they're like, all right, yeah. let's test it a little bit more now. One thing I was curious about because I know Pete, you've played, and I think Chewy has as well. I'm not sure about AJ. Um, Little Town Hero. How how does any of this compare to that game? Have did you see any familiarities with the new battle system, with like the running around the town and stuff? Because it kind of feels like there's a little bit of lineage from how the engine is like maybe working in terms of the running around the village and things like that. It definitely has some things that uh, it borrows from Little Town, or maybe not borrows, but learns from. Um, the idea of you having like a town that's a home base with characters that you build out and, you know, advance the story and you unlock new things and new people and blah, blah, blah. That kind of seems like what the, the core loop of this game is, right? Is building out your settlement and filling out the Pokedex and all those things. I can see that connection there. Um, the battle system in Little Town Hero is like way, way different than, than Pokemon, but the whole like turn order thing um, is something that they played with a little bit in Little Town Hero. So I, I feels like they took some of the learnings from that game and, and are experimenting with, with you know, how you could maybe um, implement some of those same ideas in the context of Pokemon. So uh, Olaf's follow-up question, right? Um, 
Oh, I've said it looks like a fun game, uh, which, which is the most important thing, of course, about a game. However, do the improvements that we saw in the Pokemon Presents justify the uh, current release date? And if so, do you think this trailer will change the view that some people have of the game? And then also on the trailer was about the world we saw in the trailer. Do you guys feel like it's empty or is it okay? We got some peaks on some ruins. However, for the uh, rest, it was mostly plains of, gla- of grass. So, um, go ahead, AJ. I don't, I don't feel like any of this stuff that we're seeing now are improvements. I think they're like further opening the curtain. They're saying like, here's more of the game that we already made. Not here's what we added since the last time you saw this game. Um, sure. And I also think that like a lot of that is intentional. Like there, there's stuff that they just straight up don't show us. Like with Sword and Shield, where initially it looked like, oh, Pokemon are just, you know, you run into them in the tall grass and that's it. And then the next trailer that we saw a few months after that was like, oh, shoot, everybody's in the in the overworld now. Sick. You know, I think it's a lot of stuff like that where the parts of the world that we're seeing could be more like um, empty than they are in reality, like in the game, because they want the focus to just be on like, it's an open world now. That's cool. Just look at it in its like most bare form, and then they show us more and more of that as time goes on. Or like to your to the point you made earlier, right? Which is that like the trailer we're seeing is not the finalized version of the game, yeah. right? So it's like maybe right. in the current build that they had when they were putting together this trailer, you couldn't have that many Pokemon on screen without it not looking slow. So they wanted to mm-hmm. minimize it and make it so that hey, we're gonna show like two or three on screen at a time, so it's really smooth, but. By the time the game drops, that is not a problem anymore. You know, like there's I'll a lot honest, of. Though, I, I kind of feel like it probably will look and feel pretty similar to what the trailer looks like. I don't remember Sword and Shield having many graphical improvements from the trailers to the final release. It was game. more performance uh, things, yeah, from when they first showed it to when we got it. So we we'll pro- we'll probably get that, but I don't think it's gonna. I don't think they're gonna all of a sudden add like twenty more trees, and then there's some more like. No. Yeah, no, I don't think it's gonna be more like trees. That. I think there's definitely gonna be like more Pokemon in the world, though, for sure. That's kind of what I'm thinking as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like it looks empty. Like I know a lot of people right. have made that argument, but it's like there are large swaths of Breath of the Wild where you're running through an open field and there's nothing going on. Massive, to every massive, open yeah. world game. Yeah. Like yeah. If, if if worlds were filled to the brim all the time, they it wouldn't... would get old fast. Yeah, right. right. So, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I, again, it's not to say that, like, these concerns are unfounded. Like, I get why people are asking those questions, but I don't know that it's a problem is, is where mm-hmm. I'm at with it. Um, yeah. And obviously, we won't know until we get our hands on it. Mm-hmm. To me, it gave the vibes that it was, like, maybe further along in the town than that first initial trailer that we saw. Mm, yeah, I that's haven't gone true. back and watched it, but I'm like, I remember seeing like planks of woods for for buildings. Like, oh yeah, you mean like in the looked, development of the town? Yeah, in the develop like, like the actual yeah. in game, like in game. Uh, yeah, yeah, like in point. lore, not not like them yeah. making the video game, but them like exactly. building this settlement. Yeah. I yeah, thought that's so, how they made video games with like planks of wood, and then they slowly like you know <laughs> hammer the buildings together within the engine. And that's I mean, you're a programmer, Steve. Yeah. You would know. Yeah, it's true, cool. it's true. You would know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, no. For me, I felt like we were just seeing like a little bit further along the story mm-hmm. and everything, but it made me interested in like, are we doing a little bit of town building here? Like, what is going to unlock as we build stuff? So yeah, uh, that that interests me. That very your much interesting. Me. Hat that you've got and it could there, also you know? be like a Pokemon, a new Pokemon Snap thing, where it's like you're new to this world. Pokemon don't trust you; they're hiding and stuff. But like the further you get in, it's like, oh, okay, Pokemon feel more comfortable to like come out. And maybe the opposite of that, they don't feel comfortable with you being here, and they're going to attack you now. You know, like that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Those are the kinds of things I'm hoping for. You know, and like, and 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 you know, I've accepted right, and uh, <laughs> I know. H and I have talked about this a lot when we talk about Pokemon, right? It's like Pokemon game, Pokemon moves forward in 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 baby steps, right? It's not leaps yes. and bounds. It's it's yes. little things. So some of the things that we're hoping for, some of the things we're asking for, might not come this game. They might come in the next game, right? Mm-hmm. And we'll just have to be okay with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
basically Nintendo. Yeah, because like realistically, they don't have to do any of that. They're like, oh, okay, we're the biggest franchise. We're, we sold 20 plus million last time. Cool. We'll do that again, but a little bit better. The fact that they're That's doing something they even a little different yeah. is like huge, right? So it's right. like, you know, you can't hope for too much. And, They've and probably I, been can't looking... even, I can't even put it all on them because I know firsthand that I've made videos in freaking 2015 being like, yo, we should have overworld Pokemon. That would be sick. And half the comment section being like, that would ruin shiny hunting. You're an idiot. They would never do anything like that. You know, like Pokemon, there's, there's definitely people like us that are like, yo, Pokemon needs to move forward and become more modern and do more, like take more risks. But there's also Pokemon fans that are like, I literally just want the same game every time. I, I get that, but there were Zelda fans that wanted the same game yeah. every time. And, and then still, Breath of the yeah, Wild still happened. Zelda fans like and that, there are a lot right? of Zelda there, there fans, are, yeah, that that's came on the other side but, of Breath of the Wild and we're like, like I want more dungeons, bring them yeah, back. It became the exact same that it used to be. Um, and that's <laughs> what that's the part of me that like empathizes with Game Freak because like and Pokemon Company at, at large is like, what do you do? <laughs> you know, like if half of your fan base is saying change everything and the other half is saying change literally nothing, what do you do? <laughs> I, that's <laughs> where you've got to do what Nintendo did and you've got to make both. You know, you I mean, make the 2D Zelda. That's for what they're people, doing right now. And you make and you make yeah they make the breath of the wild Seemingly. and, and I'm, I'm really happy with that but you know i'm very curious where legends came from and i would imagine it came from within game freak is an idea that they saw breath of the wild and this is what they wanted to do because you just got to look at the success like that is the best selling zelda game of all time by a yeah. absolute mile and if they can get that level of success with legends that's probably what they're hunting for steve you brought I up a also Real quick, AJ, I do just want to jump in there. Right. He brought up a point that I wanted to call out earlier when we were talking about the delay, and I forgot about that, which is the angle of that. You look at Breath of the Wild and your Mario Kart 8 and your Animal Crossings, which are games that have sold insane amounts of units and have continued to sell year over year. I bet you that Pokemon and Game Freak want that too. Because you made the point about, oh, we, we don't want to put all of our resources into making this big expensive game because that's not our business model. Our business model is making small iterations and releasing three or four games a generation. Right. And it's like, maybe they don't have to do that. You know, if they pivot to putting um, out one great Pokemon game, that seems th that sells the same amount as two games over the course of the same amount of time, you know, and they can and that, do the monetized yeah. DLC like they did with sword and shield. Like, I could see how that business model nets them the same amount of money without making half as many games, so each game is a higher quality. Yeah. I can see that, but I'd also uh, put a little argument, the little pushback there yeah. where it's like they – they already sold like that <laughs> like they they had the same moments of like uh in the Wii era right where Nintendo be like oh yeah Mario Kart Wii sold another 100,000 units 25 <laughs> not 20 like 15 years later or whatever right like sure. they had those moments where like Pokemon Black another million 7 years later you know like they they their Pokemon games do sell like that um, but I would say that I think that they've wanted to move Pokemon forward for a long time. And Pokemon Sun was the moment where for me, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. They're tired of this too. Yeah. <laughs> like they want to do new stuff too. Um, but baby steps, little baby steps. <laughs> yep. All right. So we're getting near the end of the show here. We got a couple more questions I want to uh, jump into. This next one comes from Trendy Brendy, another one of our Patreon supporters and a real, real ass Pokemon master out here. Uh, so Trendy Brendy wrote in and said, uh, the website makes no note of abilities being present in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Do you think that they're saving a reveal uh, of a rework later or will abilities for the new Pokemon be a selling point for a Sword Shield update or the next generation of games? I personally think the battle system in Legends will be deep enough that abilities don't need to stick around and it keeps the flavor of the Legends series separate from the game's ranked battles uh uh, sorry, and separate from the games that ranked battles will be played on. Also, quick note, I was on the fence the last time you guys talked about Legends, but the new Pokemon and battle system and confirmation of trading definitely won me over. Oh. I thought that was interesting. I didn't I yeah. didn't clock the fact that we hadn't seen any abilities yet, but obviously we saw that major change to the battle system with like turn order and like how that there's these different attack types and you're right. kind of getting that like bravely default 
you know, kind of like turn order manipulation thing thrown into the battle system, um, which yeah. obviously changes things up quite a bit. Because I, cause I like my instinct was to be like, I mean, they usually don't talk about that. But when they announce a new Pokemon, they do mention like this Pokemon has this ability. Right. And they didn't do that. With so, any of so them. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, so maybe they're not a thing in this game or maybe they're waiting to talk about how they're different here. Um, because like there's maybe they affect the overall like unite. There's like abilities in unite, right? And they're, they have the same names, but they do something different. Uh -huh. So maybe that's like a situation here, um, where abilities still exist in some way, but they're different. Yeah, I could see if it's maybe like they have an effect on the overworld or maybe, mm -hmm. you know, like there's some other like gameplay mechanic they're tied to that we're not aware of yet. I could see that. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be like what, you know, what Brendy's saying where like maybe these Pokemon just don't get abilities right now, but when mm -hmm. they inevitably get transferred over to some other games, we'll get that reveal at a later date, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Pat Green on Twitter wrote in and said, do you think speed stats will change for balance reasons now that we have a form of ATB? No. I don't think um, they'll change because of that. Like, yeah. Pokemon stats change every generation for balance. Mm -hmm. So right. some will change, but I don't know that it'll be because of that. Mm -hmm. Like you just spoke Chinese. I have no idea what any of that meant. <laughs> I love how I said it, and I just look, and, and both Chewie and AJ are both like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, no, yeah, I'm with you. And Steve is like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are we speaking Japanese now? What's <laughs> what is ATB? Active time battles. Okay. It's the fact that it's like so you you see in the in the uh, trailer where it's like they showed the priority shifting depending on what version of attack they did, whether it was like the um. What is it? What is the term? They they did the uh It's like power speed, power yeah, yeah, agile and um strong style. Strong. Yeah, um, yeah, that was styles, it. Yeah. So like so like if they did an agile move, it showed you like, oh okay, Lucario's first now, you know, like that sort of situation or whatever, right? Um that's what that Which is. Which felt straight out of uh uh, what's the y Yakuza where you have like the you're going through the streets and you have like the brawler styles and <laughs> things like that, and you just like, you know. Knocking them out. I could see a Yakuza Pokemon game. That would be great. It very, <laughs> very much just reminds me of, of the Bravely Default battle system, which I love, um, where it's very yeah. much just like, okay, do you think you can kill them in one one turn? All right, blow all your turns oh, right four. now. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Um, I, I'm very excited by those changes. Um, I I'm also like... curious with the boss battles because they do not look like the same. No, yeah, you're like, like real time to me. Like yeah. you were and you're like dodging and, and yeah. yeah. And I am arguably way more excited about that. <laughs> me For too. sure. That's what I was talking about with the like monster hunter style thing. That's yeah. what I want, like real time Pokemon. Because yeah, like I I mean I'm I'm always talking about how I want the battle system to change and people are like, You just want it to be Pokemon. I'm like, no, I want it to just be more interesting. So like it could be a turn based thing, but more interesting. But mm -hmm. I, I think it would be a lot easier to do that if it wasn't strictly turn based because you can like marry the two system heavy with also mechanically heavy um easier than you can make going through menus mechanically interesting <laughs> it's not impossible though you know um yeah, it's not impossible I, like and i i love a good turn based battle system but i think that like as much as i even love pokemon's battle system there's a lot of things it can learn from games like bravely default or persona 5 mm -hmm. or you know other games yeah. that have even taken like that same kind creature. of battle system Go ahead. Even like the creature collection aspect is like you you basically whittle them down to a sliver of HP and throw a Pokeball. That's like what it's always been. And like yep. you have a lot more interesting concepts out there from like Persona 5 and Shin Megami Tensei where it's like, oh, you have to do some certain things that make this thing like you and then it'll join your team, you know? And that feels like th this game feels like an opportunity to try that where it's like, oh, we don't. Do you, we don't mess with Pokemon, but now we're going to try and we'll, you know, explore that a little bit. I hope and see they what also like. use more ideas from their own property <laughs> because like <laughs> there's stuff like Pokemon natures and stuff 
where it's like yeah, this yeah, Pokemon yeah. is timid. Why is that not shown in the overworld? Right. Why yeah. is that like because because mm -hmm. I feel like um we haven't seen a variation depending on what the Pokemon is, but I feel like what we're probably going to see is like Shinx. That's an aggressive Pokemon, and I hate that. <laughs> like I want them to be like, oh, this Shinx, this one's timid, but this one, mm -hmm. he's you know like brash and he's going to attack you because his nature yeah. is brash, not because he's a Shinx. Yeah, it would, it would definitely be fun to see a deeper level of AI among Pokemon in the overworld. But I also think just in general, like, <laughs> that's something that I remember. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I think you and I were making fun of Sword and Shield for uh, AJ when mm -hmm. it was contemporary, which is, like, back in the day, it was cool to have, like, this is Last Jane and Last Marie. And they're, they're the same model and they have yeah. basically the same kind of dialogue. And it's like, whatever, but sure, fine. Like unsettling. Yeah. yeah, but now it's like, no. Like, this is no <laughs> longer acceptable. You need to have named characters with good dialogue and personality. Like, I'm yeah. not... And not like Sun and Moon where you write a novel's worth of dialogue that is not good or interesting. Like, yeah. it's gotta be... It's gotta be a little deeper. It's gotta be a little bit better. There's too many other games that do it well you know right and a lot of the ai already exists but they, what they tie it to makes it less interesting because right. like the fact that there are pokemon that aggro you and there are pokemon that run away from you tells you that they could do that and they could say like okay well let's tie these two natures but instead they're like let's tie well it looks like we don't have the game yet but um they're like let's tie it to the pokemon yeah yeah, yeah. Um, which, yeah, I agree with you. It's, it, it feels like it's oversimplifying things. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got two more here that we're going to jump into. This one comes from Zade, one of our Patreon supporters who wrote in and said, Hey guys, hope all is well with you. Shout out to my man Chewy for the big ups on the homeowner status. My question of the week is something I think will either uh, you'll be asked a lot or not at all. Obviously, we had the Pokemon Presents on Wednesday, and we saw a much better looking trailer of Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm wondering, and maybe this question applies to mainly Pete and Chewy and AJ, that's why we brought you in for this one, since I know that Steve doesn't have much experience with Pokemon. Just from watching the trailer, do you believe that this is the Pokemon game that will finally advance this series forward, like how Breath of the Wild did for Zelda? Keep up the amazing work, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Homeowner Zade. Uh, I uh, think yes and no, as every Pokemon I, game does. Yeah, no, I think no. Um, and I made a video about this <laughs> where I think that, like, in hindsight, it will be the, like, the one that most people will, like, credit with moving the series forward in the sense that it was the first step forward. Where I feel like the thing that got us breath of the wild was skyward sword but not sure. necessarily in a positive way uh -huh. i think that this game is that it's them trying new ideas and seeing what works out of the ideas that people embrace seeing what doesn't work and then they make the breath of the wild next with all the stuff that people like about this game new ideas that gel well with those introduced ideas from arceus and make the actual breath of the wild pokemon game Agreed. Yeah. I'm along those lines, too. I think it's just going to be some, like you guys have been saying, just some steps forward. And I don't think we'd honestly get that feeling from a Pokemon game until they, like, dedicated and just kind of went for it on a mainline yeah. game. If they, they just, just went go away straight to years. a mainline game <laughs> yeah. and were like, this is a brand new Pokemon. We're, do we're throwing everything you knew out the window. This is yeah. what you're getting now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when we'll get that Breath of the Wild feeling, I think. Right. But they're not going to do that. <laughs> no, no. I think I think this will feel like a, a diet <laughs> version yeah, of what they're that. not doing it now. But I think they might do it eventually. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe hundred years now. <laughs> no, I I disagree. I think that like Pokemon, if we line it up with Zelda, they're on pace because Zelda didn't make major shifts either. And we were 30 years down the line when we got Breath of the Wild. I just had an argument with a, with a friend of mine about this. <laughs> like, that exact <laughs> argument of, like, they're not that different. Like, you look at yeah. the games, the few games between Majora's Mask and Breath of the Wild, and every game is just chasing Ocarina. And Pokemon's yeah. being yeah, in that tailspin. Yeah, and I would argue not even Ocarina. Like, it started with, like, Link to the Past. Like, Link to the Past is 
Ocarina, but in 2D. Sure. And then they made that game again, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And I, like my friend Alex that uh, works for Game Informer, he just put out a video basically talking about like Breath of the Wild made him a Zelda fan because like he didn't grow up with Nintendo and all that stuff. And then like Breath of the Wild took away all the stuff that made him not like the game. Like it was like there were like hard stops for him with wanting to fall in love with the Zelda game before that. And I feel like the thing that Breath of the Wild did that the other Zelda games didn't is they walked into developing that game like they walked into developing the first one. Yes. Whereas every game between the first game in Breath of the Wild was trying to be the last game. Where they're like, oh, well, okay, let's just make a better Ocarina of Time. And then they become a parody of themselves. I um, would give anything for Pokemon to do that um, mm -hmm. in tone. Because that's the right. thing that I miss the most about what Pokemon used to be versus what it is now. It's had every yeah. one of its edges sanded down to be more, you know, a global yeah. franchise and that appeals to everyone. Better version of the last thing we did, rather than what if it's the best version of the vision we had when we made the first thing. Right, and that's like the mentality they brought into Gold and Silver, right? Where they're like, if this yep. is the last game, it's going to be the best game. Okay, mm -hmm. can we do that again? Maybe because that game is amazing. All right, so last question. Well, I was just going to say, I Go feel ahead. like the thing with Breath of the Wild, though, another thing they did was they kind of just, they 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 looked at what everyone considered to be a Zelda game, and a lot of people have different differing opinions on what is yeah. a, a Zelda game. Is it a yeah. game where Link's the main character and it has, you know, Ganon and Zelda in the actual game? Is it a game where there's like these linear puzzle dungeons and you you know have to do everything in a specific order and they threw that out it kind of feels like we've, we're just seeing the tip of that with legends in that they're finally willing to make some changes to the battle system in mm. what seemingly is the first time ever making significant changes to it uh and then i think this is just kind of opening the floodgates you know you, they tried a few things in skyward sword added the flying mechanics and things like that in um, and uh, it feels like I you hundred know, percent agree with with you both that the same things happening for Pokemon, and I would very much like this to be the future of Pokemon, um, especially as we hopefully get more hardware and, and more like more powerful hardware and, and s s get more skilled developers. If, if yeah, uh, say, AJ is correct, they, yeah, preferably <laughs> they bring on people to make the video game i think that that mm. makes like brilliant diamond and shining pearl super important too yeah because huge. for such a long time they're like ah but we make this you know like we make this and it's successful because of us <laughs> you know but like <laughs> if brilliant diamond and shining pearl proves to be successful maybe that'll make them more willing to like even if it's not them like calling on like super outside developers like western studios or anything like that them hitting up monolith do intelligence like, systems who did out. fire emblem like, yeah are you fucking kidding me intelligence systems they could do they could hit up monolith they could hit up bandai namco for, again yeah you know like there, there's so many studios that are like attached in some way that could make pokemon a lot better just by doing like, a lot of the like ancillary stuff yeah. you know definitely rezo would be fantastic on this mm. like look at the job they did on Link's awakening just get them on i still want them to work on earthbound the, the but, remakes you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for that. All right, so last last question. This one comes from uh, DJ, who wrote in and said, "Hey, Pete and Steve, it's DJ. Uh, he originally wrote this in for Flip Screen, and then told us to pivot it to Nintendo Noise. So he's also saying hello to Chewy and AJ. All right, so that's just implied." Aww. Uh, so he said, it's DJ, yes, DJ the Content Lewis, writing in this week. <laughs> of course, the Pokemon Presents just happened, and we learned so much about uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus. My question is geared more towards Legends. Are you interested in the lore that surrounds a Pokemon region where friendly relationships between humans and Pokemon don't exist quite yet? The game makes me feel so isolated in this world just from the trailers and i'm here for it it's the one thing for pokemon it's one thing for pokemon to not like you and it's a completely different thing where the entire region seems to think pokemon are terrifying creatures quote from professor leventon steve i know you aren't the biggest pokemon fan but is there anything that was shown in the presents that piqued your interest what type of game could have a um could have a pokemon coat of paint that would get you excited p.s i hope both of you are picking up that dialga and palkia switch light we're not. <laughs> Loving the new shows and wishing I'm you both the best, it. DJ. I'm debating it, dude. I'm debating it. Do Don't it. do it, AJ. Don't do I'm it. I'm debating it. I'm if it had an OLED I'm, screen, I already yeah, got the OLED, OLED on. model. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I already had a pre-order too. That's the only reason why it's a debate. <laughs> 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 but, 
Chewy, are you, are you getting it? I'm skipping it. Uh, but my brother has the, the one that came out for Sword and Shield. He doesn't I love even like the pink he, like, framed blue it. one. <laughs> yeah. He just framed it. He doesn't even play it. That's great. I'm like, that looks pretty dope. <laughs> um, Why do they always switch lights, though? For Pokemon, uh, just, oh, Pokemon's a portable the game for children. Thing. Yeah, it drives me uh, nuts. Yeah, but anyway, cool. I I'm definitely interested in the lore angle. I think that's one of the things I'm most interested in, aside from the mm. um, you know, the the mechanics is just that like we've never had a Pokemon game that wasn't set in present day, right? Ever. So I love the idea of being able to fill in some blanks about the universe. It's like I think that's one of my biggest complaints about the Pokemon universe. It's so deep, and there's so many directions you could go in and explore it and see other corners of it and other lifestyles and all these things and they're never interested in doing that so i think this is, that's super cool do you yeah. think there's going to be a lot of depth in terms of the lore there or is it just going to be what we've seen in the trailer and that's it and then the rest is just catching pokemon i think there'll be a lot of depth in the background i don't think it'll be like here let us tell you all about the lore but it'll be more like what the game tells you without telling you that then the community so, yeah. can dig into and and you know contextualize that's what yeah, I liked I think... about Breath of the Wild, because it was like, especially because this is set in a, a region we, we know, seeing like in Breath of the Wild what was destroyed after like, the apocalypse had happened, and you know, you would go back to like um, the the temple at the beginning, and it was totally destroyed, and you're like, oh, I've been here before in another game. I wonder if there's going to be elements of that in um, the Hisuian region uh, that were in other games. I think on some level. Yeah, I think the like the most exciting thing about this game specifically is Diamond and Pearl is probably the first time that Pokemon um like gave you a lore dump <laughs> for all intents and purposes ever. Like cuz there's always been like a, a pretty deep lore, but there's like a dedicated section of the game being like, "Here's lore." <laughs> and that doesn't or it hasn't happened before Diamond and Pearl. So for them to be able to do the like show not tell of that rather than Rowan sitting you down in the library and being like, "Here's the history of Pokémon." Um, <laughs> right. that could be sick. Yeah. Maybe like more like what we saw in Gen 2 where it's like the unknown ruins where it's like you can learn about mm -hmm. the thing, but it's like it's not shoving that down your throat. Yeah. Because Pokemon games always, for what it's worth, have, like, pretty deep lore. Mm -hmm. Like, they're good at lore. They're bad at incorporating that into the story. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Chewie? That's kind of my worry. Exact uh, that's exactly it, where it's just, like, the stories are made for little kids, basically. So it's not something i'm ever really confident in but i'm interested to see if they like take it a new direction because this is like being a side title it has the opportunity of being like oh you're not 10 years old going on your own adventure and i feel like that setup always kind of like immediately throws you into that story where it's like okay kids have to be able to follow this and now that maybe we possibly don't have that maybe because we, we are getting some starters from different regions. Maybe there's an outside, like, anthropologist-type character who's, like, also studying this place. Uh, we don't know quite yet, but, yeah, I'm interested to see how they take that story and build it in a different way than they do the mainline games. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Hopefully they learn that Pixar exists and <laughs> stories can be made for kids that are, aren't, are like, good. down to them. Yeah. yeah. Like, and enjoyable for everybody. Crazy basically. thought. Because yeah. if, mm -hmm. if you're not talking down to your audience everybody can enjoy it you know exactly. like it could be mm -hmm. intended for children but if you're not talking down to the child everybody will like it absolutely all right steve you got the last word yeah so i love the look of uh, legends i actually do think i'll pick it up i think that's mainly because i'm ready for breath of the wild 2 and this is like breath of the wild light and i'm happy to go for that sure um as for dj's other question what type of game could have a coat of paint uh, Pokemon Co. Paint that would get you excited. I would love like an 18 rated Pokemon game like Persona and it's just like a real fucked up story and um, the Pokemon are evil and they're like horrible actual monsters and they're attacking you and killing you and like have ravaged everyone and you've got to like take them down. And I would love a story like that with gore and uh, adult themes so rather than a kid's version of the game. It's Gale of Darkness but M-rated, right? Like all the Pokemon are evil. You gotta cleanse the shadow Pokemon. Yeah. I love it. Love yes, it. it would be great. Love it. <laughs> and we all know DJ would love that. 
<laughs> and then, and then chuck, in, chuck in some social stuff. I'm there for that as well, you know. Add that on. Yeah. What were you, gonna what say were you saying, saying AJ? Sorry. I was going to say you see in real time a lot of the horror stories in Pokemon uh, and Pokedex. Yes, exactly. Like some, dude, some dude walks up to his, like, uh, I can't think of the Pokemon. Slugma's of all form. Macargo. up to him and you, yeah, and you just freaking burst in the flame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That type of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hat and then uh, hears somebody like scream or whatever and flies eight miles and steals yeah. their soul out of their body. It's good yeah. shit. Pokemon World is fucking <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, imagine if they went off on like some of the other games and built lore like that. Like, let's see this war that Lieutenant Surge went to. Please. It's oh, my happen. God. Like, you, can you imagine the idea of them this, mentioning this the fact that there was a war me. in the world of Pokemon now? Like, no, of course not. That's the shit no, I mean. still, but that's the thing. They still do. They talk about the Pokemon <laughs> war at least once in every video game that they make. I know, and, but it's like, it's so like, I mean, to, to be know, fair, it was problem. real front and center in, in uh, the whole thing. In uh, X and Y. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm calling it right now. Gen 10, not 9, 10. <laughs> It's Pokemon just about war. the war. Yeah. Pokemon War. <laughs> We're going back in time now, so who's to say? It could happen. Main character's Lieutenant Surge. Yo, Pokemon Pokemon Legends uh fucking I don't know, Mewtwo. <laughs> like, <laughs> might be about the war, dude. Who knows? Legends, <laughs> World War P. Anyway. I think you just get a Pokemon Warriors game. Like they did with Hyrule Warriors that just explains I mean, all the right? details. But that was like a different situation. That was like a what if Pokemon were in this world rather than telling the story sure. about their world? Anyway, uh, before we get out of here and I get into all our plugs, J AJ, thank you for joining us. Tell the folks where they can find you and your show and your podcast. You can find me at youtube.com slash Renags4 or twitch.tv slash Renags4. My social media is at a McCray Jr. There you, you go. Can find all the other stuff that I do when I tweet it out. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, go check it out. Um, it's a good show. I can't wait to be on it someday. Yeah, one day, dude. One day. One day we'll collab. Yeah. He's been on it. I got to get Chewy on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank yeah. you guys for joining us here on another episode of Nintendo Noise. Remember, uh, if you want to uh, keep up with all the stuff that we're doing, head to flipscreen.games, our website. We've got links to all of our platforms. We're on Discord. We're on social media. Come join the community. Come be a part of what we're building here. We're having a great time doing it for you. And uh, seemingly you're having a great time listening. You, you keep telling me you are. So um, I'm just going to have to choose to believe that. Uh, and again, if you want to show your support, go above and beyond. You can head over to patreon.com slash flipscreengames, where for just two bucks, you can get access to one more thing, our weekly Patreon-exclusive show where we talk about uh, the stuff outside of the world of video games going on in our lives. Uh, but if you don't have those bucks to toss, there's a bunch of free ways that you can support the show. Share it, like it, you know, let people know that we're out here doing some stuff that you enjoy uh, and that you think that they should come be a part of what we're doing here, too. Um, and yeah, and we'll catch you on Thursday for our uh, weekly Twitch stream. So we'll see you over there. AJ, thank you again. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll see you all next week, everybody. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.